Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a William Optics Megrez 90, a 90mm f6.9 apochromatic refractor. Now some people have asked why there aren't more William Optics reviews on this channel. The answer is quite simple, they just haven't come around here lately. Give it some time, I'm sure that will change. You know, I first ran across William Optics at Astrofest in Kankakee, Illinois. I believe it was somewhere around 1998 or 1999. Keep in mind back then we didn't have the proliferation of brands that we had today. If you went to a telescope trade show or a star party, the same five or six vendors would show up all the time and you got to know them pretty well. But this time I saw that there was a table by a new supplier called William Optics, which appeared to have some of the most physically beautiful telescopes I had ever seen in my life. Beautiful mechanical assemblies and the views that I saw at night were quite encouraging as well. So today, William Optics of course is a well-established brand here and they've been around long enough that some of the earlier models, including this one, may have ventured into collectible territory. This one was selected as a Sky and Telescope hot product way back when, and Astronomy also had a very positive review as well. So let's take a closer look at this telescope. I've said this before, but telescope manufacturers, please give us a nice case with your telescope. I don't care. Soft case, hard case, people have their preferences. It doesn't matter. Please give us a case. Don't make us pay extra for it. It's really nice to have one of these around in case I have to transport it in the car, or occasionally if I have to fly with it. You open this up, we have an aluminum style flight case, and I don't know if this is coming across on video, but as, as William Optics personality, this is a beautifully finished telescope. So we pull this out here, let's get the case out of the way. This white powder coated finish, got this signature gold accent with the Swan logo on it. Later versions of these are red. Nice that the scope fits in the case with the diagonal. You can see someone has mounted a finder block here. But we look at the optics here. Very nice coatings there and what appear to be at least two knife edge baffles inside. Well, we extend the dew shield and does its magic act. A lot of refractors like this, they look nice and compact when you first see them, but then you start doing this and they get large pretty quick. At the bottom, we have a mounting block here. Now they say this is for a tripod mount, but I really hope you don't try to put this thing on a tripod. This really does need a telescope astronomy specific mount. Um, the website lists the optical tube weight at, at around seven pounds, but Refractor owners know once you start adding rings, finder, plate, diagonal, eyepiece, anything else you want to put on here, my weight as used was close to 12 pounds. Got a serial number here, that's pretty reassuring. And a Crayford style focuser. This is very nice, it's a two speed focuser. Here's your fine focus here. Some people get, again, very picky about the focusers that they have. You want to try to retrofit a feather touch on here, go right ahead. Um, I don't think it's necessary. If you could do it, be prepared to pay. So on this here, uh, because this focuser is rotatable like this, see this? I actually use this, um, you know, quote unquote, upside down. So what I would do is I, I did something like this. And if you get a pair of rings and a plate, this is the William Optics official ring and plate assembly. This is quite beefy. Got a Vixen compatible plate at the bottom here and mount it like this. You'll notice there are many drilled holes on the rings and on this plate that's normally on the bottom for you to mount auto guiders, finders, and whatever accessories you might want to put on here. This was a finder we have here. And the way that I use this is this is a Vixen compatible plate, and I mount this on the top upside down, either here or here, and I put an auto guider on it over there. With a payload weight of somewhere around 11 to 12 pounds, as seen here, it makes a good fit for a mid size mount like this Celestron AVX. With a low power eyepiece in here, like this 27 millimeter pan optic from Teleview, sweeping the sky at low power can be a lot of fun, even if you don't know what you're doing. 
Now, refractors excel at the moon and the planets, and the moon does look terrific through this telescope. But the planets right now, as I'm filming this, are very close to the sun. I'm going to have to wait a few months before I get a good look at those. I'm sure the views are going to be fantastic. What about deep sky? Is a 90 millimeter telescope enough for you to have it as your only scope to do deep sky observing? I'm going to say no. It's not quite enough. If you have a four inch clasp refractor, it seems to put it in another class and things get a little bit easier. But 90 millimeters, it only gathers so much light. For example, from my location here, the galaxies M81 and M82 are visible. However, the two little companion galaxies nearby, NGC 3077 and NGC 2976, can't be seen. I suspect if I get to a darker location, I may get those. From this location here, I can see all seven stars in the Little Dipper, but just barely. <laughs> Things are getting slightly worse here as time goes on. This used to be considered a pretty good location, but as civilization encroaches, it's getting tougher to see deep sky objects. I have a friend who says, within a generation or so, we're all just gonna be looking at the moon and the planets. I hope that's not true. So from this location, M65, M66, and NGC 3628 are just barely visible, and the Virgo cluster is pretty much a washout. Again, I suspect if I get to a darker location, that will change as well. On the other hand, if you have something to supplement a telescope like this, like say an eight or 10 inch reflector, you're gonna be in good shape. That's a good set of complementary instruments to have in your collection. So I didn't do a lot of imaging through this telescope. I was having too much fun looking through it. But I did take some astrophotos, and just like the light pollution is encroaching on our ability to see dim, deep sky objects, all of the satellites that we've put up there lately are infringing on astrophotography. And I'm wondering if there's going to be enough space up there for us to shoot long exposure photographs in the future. But I did take some of these. See what you think. Okay, so this is what some of you really want to know. How does the William Optics Magres 90 compare to you know what? <laughs> you know what in this case is the astrophysics stowaway. This is the telescope that single-handedly created the market for a 90 millimeter APO. You didn't even know you wanted a 90 millimeter APO until the AP stowaway came along. So this is an unobtainable telescope. I sat on a waiting list for 19 years to get this one, but it has spawned a host of imitators. Two of the most famous include the TMB-92 and the Takahashi Sky-90, and I'd probably throw this one in there as well. Interesting that after all this time, there hasn't been any one of these models that's taken hold and taken foot of being the stowaway replacement. These models kind of come and go. But how does it compare? Well, it compares very well. On the star test, this is very, very slightly undercorrected. I wouldn't worry about it. The stowaway's optics are perfect. Now, the stowaway does take a while to cool down, so it does appear to be undercorrected until the telescope reaches equilibrium, and then you see that it's perfect. As far as chromatic aberration goes, I wouldn't worry about it. This has a tiny bit if you pump the power up to stupid high magnifications. These are powers you're never going to use, but you know, refractory owners tend to be very precise people, and you can see just a little bit of false color if you know where to look. And again, these are magnifications that you will never use. So on double stars, it's a pretty good test for refractors. Of course, Mizar and Alcor are too easy. There was no difference whatsoever. I looked at others, including Algebra, Castor, Eta Cassiopeia, and other double stars. Now, when you're looking at doubles, it's not only the separation you're looking for, but in the case of, say, Eta Cass, there is a wide magnitude difference between the two and a wide color difference between the two. The secondary of Eta Cass is a wine-colored red. And you want to see that the colors stay put, and you want to see that the magnitude difference, that the larger one doesn't wash out the smaller one. And in case here, it's fine. Is the stowaway better? 
yes, it's better, but I don't think you would notice unless you had the two side by side. One thing I did notice is there is a very, very, very light amount of light scatter associated with this one that I didn't see with the stowaway. Again, I doubt anybody would notice or care unless you had them side by side. But, you know, refractor owners, they tend to care about this stuff, don't they? If one telescope is 1% better than the other one, they're going to talk about it. They're going to go online and talk about it with their friends. They're going to debate how much this is. So I did think it's worth mentioning, but for the casual observer and even for the most serious observers, I wouldn't worry about it. This is going to be just fine for you. Hard to believe you can get something of this quality for around $1,000. And in fact, the last few of these I've seen sold went for about that much money. So if you can find one used at that price, if, this, if you're in the market for this size and aperture telescope, I would say go for it. So there you have it, a look at the William Optics MegRes 90. Short review here, that's very often a good sign. I didn't really have that much to say. So one question that comes up, there have been so many William Optics refractors over the years. Can you take the comments I made about this one and apply them to the other models that they've had over the past 20 plus years? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say mostly yes. I find that the landed quality of this brand tends to be very high and the quality control tends to be very tight. I hope this review has helped you to decide if this telescope is right for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.